This is Lee Oden from TopRankBlog.com at Search Engine Strategies Hong Kong with me. I have the celebrated expert of analytics, evangelist, and very passionate speaker, Avinish Kaushik, who just got done doing a keynote presentation. Um, very enthusiastic, lots of great insights, Avinash. It's great to have a chance to talk with you. Um, so I think one of the effective things about your presentation was your metaphor and the storytelling and how you emphasize the importance of telling the analytics story. I wonder if you have some advice for marketing managers out there that need to find creative ways to tell the analytics story, to get buy-in, to get management approval uh, for investments in analytics, search, social, that sort of thing. Yeah, no, I, I think that, that for far too often, because it is so easy to get access to data, just slap Google Analytics or Yahoo Analytics on your site, and you have a lot of data, that we tend to gen take that and regurgitate it. And you know, I, I call it data puking. And we're very good at data puking. And, and, and there you see, like the, the, even, even there I, I use the metaphor, because it's very visual to you what you're doing when I say data puking. I can tell you that we send people lots of reports, but it would, wouldn't sound the same. So I, I found that uh, we have to take some of the dryness and, and connect it to real life when we present data. So, so when people ask me what the, what the metric bounce rate is, I very rarely say that it's the percent of sessions with single page views. That, that doesn't communicate what they are. What I say is they represent from a customer perspective and experience that is, I came, I puked, I left. Now you're never going to forget that, right? You're never going to forget that definition because of the way it was articulated. So I found that after years of trying to convince people, I've, I've tried to get data to connect to real life. I, I, when, when, I, when, I, when a newspaper company ran an email campaign and I analyzed it later, I, I basically said, you had the 13 million one night stands with customers <laughs> because you created no visitor loyalty, right? And, and again, there it was a way to make the data very real to them. Everybody knows what a one night stand is and most of them are not great. <laughs> so you, you, you just communicate it, but also in the way that you present data. So in, in one case, um, we created a simple table and, and we said each segment is a persona of a customer, but what we're gonna say is we're gonna have people uh, who have one night stands, people we have loyalists, and the super crazies. And, and by using the term super crazy, it was, it was a term of endearment for people who had placed multiple orders on our website. And, and we just called them super crazy because they were so loyal to us that we were astonished that they were so loyal to us. And again, in an Excel table, rather than saying people with X number of orders, X page views, it wouldn't quite communicate the data the same way. So right. increasingly, there are lots of, of techniques within Excel or within or on the web itself that allow you to present data more. And, and I don't like all the proliferation of infographics, but the reason infographics have taken a mm -hmm. shape of their own is because they visualize data in very different ways. And I think that if any marketer, SEO, SEM, email, if, if you don't know how to tell your story, I think that the impact of your data that you're presenting will be like 50% less than you want it to be. You want to you connect it. So, so when I created the graph that you saw today um, about the overall mobile market in China, and then, and then the, the, the Nokia, Apple, and Android markets, the way I present the data to people is I say, this is your share of shelf. And, uh. and that, they understand that metric in the offline world because everybody wants share of shelf on Walmart. Exactly. And all I'm saying is, here's your share of shelf on Google. And it gets them to connect the data to something that means something. And so I really encourage people to try these techniques because it really transforms people's inquisitiveness about data, mm -hmm. but more than that, the way they take action on the data. You know, it's kind of interesting. The, uh, there, in the content and SEO world, people talk about you know, or, uh, you know, a crappy content with a zippy headline or packaged <laughs> well will always beat really great content that has a boring headline. And so it goes to show that packaging your information can be just as important because in, if you don't get distribution of that information to the right people, if we don't engage, uh, you know, our internal reporting, of yeah. course, to folks who can, you know, the hippos yes. <laughs> that are out there, then we can't, you know, achieve the desired outcomes that we're looking for. I agree. I, I have said to people that the greatest dashboard in the world that has web, uh, greatest web analytics dashboard in the world has no numbers on it. If you, mm -hmm. if you can get to that, just maybe a couple graphs, uh, with, with removing the numbers too, and, and maybe some bullet items, and maybe, maybe a little, little uh, insight written in English or, or Chinese, if you're in uh -huh. Hong Kong. Yeah. I mean, 
a dashboard with no numbers can be exponentially more powerful because people, especially higher up, you go to the chain of command, often have an allergic reaction to a data puke. Right. But, but when you put in the forethought of creating that type of a dashboard, it is so much more effective. So Lee, Lee I would even go farther than you and say, it is mandatory for uh, us <laughs> SEOs and, and analysts to embrace this if we truly want to drive more action, which by the way, if you didn't know, is directly connected to you making money. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yes. So uh, folks want to learn more. You've got a fantastic book, and uh, but what, what folks want to learn more about you and uh, about analytics and all that there is, uh, where should they go? Um, just uh, type Avinash into Google or Baidu and you'll uh. find me. But but uh, typically, um, I'm at Avinash on Twitter, or uh, my blog is Occam's Razor. I think those are two great sources to start. Okay, great. Thanks a lot.